Hey everyone, this is Randall. Welcome to Hobby Corner video number two. Uh, like my first video, this one's kind of impromptu. And uh, really I, I just started working on my Baratheons and I kind of got to a point here where I was experimenting with the process that I was going to go with for batch painting all of these wardens. And I kind of got to a point where I had various models at various stages of completion and thought it might be a good opportunity to show how I was planning to paint the uh, armor of all of them. So uh, from the get-go with my Baratheons, I've planned to mostly focus on the, the Stannis side first. And my Stannis army, my plan for them is to make them look very grungy and dirty and beat up and desperate and um, just to look like really the opposite of the Renly side who are, I want them, when I f eventually get around to painting the Renly side, I want them to look like they basically never engaged in combat at all, you know, just so pristine. So uh, with these guys, I wanted to give them kind of a, a dingy look a little bit or a, a little bit more of a um, you know, look like they've been on campaign for a long time. So, uh, I've been kind of experimenting around with processes for how to achieve that look, um, effectively and most importantly, quickly, because I am, have such a monstrous backlog of minis in general, but then a Song of Ice and Fire minis especially. So, uh, just very quickly here, I'm going to go through how I've decided to go about batch painting at least the armor, the metal portion of these Wardens and probably the rest of my Stannis guys. Um, for the Wardens, it's pretty easy since they're about 75% armor. Uh, so, you know, once you get this technique down, you're most of the way there. Um, then it's just a matter of painting some shields and, and skirts and things like that. So, uh, what this is this is what the final look will roughly look like. This guy isn't completed yet, but the armor on him, I'm I'm pretty happy with the armor. All the rest of it, I've pretty much just kind of base coated the colors on, like his skirt. I'm still not sold on the color of that. Um, the shield, I'm pretty happy with, um, but it's mostly the armor that I want to focus on here. So you'll you'll see it's it's a little shiny, but it's still slightly dull. Also, when I hit it with uh, a varnish, it's going to knock it down a lot. Um, but the, the look I wanted to go for was just kind of a, a dinge, like a little bit of a dinge on it, and then some, uh, some kind of dirt and mud in the crevices. So the, to start off, I, I prime all the minis in this Pro-Acryl Pro Black Brown Primer. Um, I don't use, I'm not using black primer. Um, I've, I've done that with some of the minis. So look, here's, here's a guy that I primed in black and then, um, dry brushed over, but I've found that the black brown looks a little bit better. It looks a little, um, more dingy, which is a term I'm, you probably noticed I'm using a lot. It looks a little dingier, less, um, it's less jarring the, the difference between the black and the the primer. So I prime him with the black brown and then I use Citadel's Necron compound dry brush paint and he goes from this to this. So you'll see comparing these two, these two are at the same stage right now. One I used a black primer for, the other one I used a black brown primer for. Um, the, the difference might be subtle, but I think this one just looks better. It, the black, the black primer on this one just seems too dark. Um, I think the black brown gives the impression that there's armor, even where, even where it's just pure primer, it gives the impression that it's kind of old, uh, old armor. So, uh, this is what he looks like after dry brushing with Necron compound. And then... 
After that, I'm hitting them with an Agrax Earthshade wash just over the armored, armored parts. And um, I'm trying to avoid the, the chain mail. So just kind of the panels. Um, and this guy here, I've actually hit him with the Agrax Earthshade. And then I've gone back after that dried and kind of re-highlighted him a little bit with the Necron compound, not as heavily as the first time. Uh, but just kind of pulling the, the edges out again. So it's also, this is also a subtle step. It's more just modulating the, the base metal color a little bit. So he isn't quite as, I guess, shiny. He's not quite as shiny as, as this guy. The, the metal will just get a little bit of a tint to it. Um, and then I go back with the Necron compound and just bring out the highlights a little bit more. So I do that. And then I, uh, the next step is I use a brown enamel wash. You can use pretty much any brown enamel wash. This is one that I've had for over a decade um, from, from back when I was painting tanks and other, other kind of military models. So I've had a, this bottle forever, but you can use pretty much any brown wash or brown black wash or any kind of dirty wash you want. And then I, uh, I, coat this whole guy, coat the whole guy in this brown wash. And then I go back after that brown wash has dried, I'll go back. And this is kind of my, one of my favorite techniques for pretty much any miniature that I use. Cause I like to do a uh, real kind of dirty, grungy lived in look. You'll apply the, you'll apply the enamel wash, let it dry. And then, uh, pour a little bit of odorless turpenoid or mineral, white mineral spirits out into, uh, into your palette. And you'll get a Q-tip and just get a little bit on there, rub some of the excess off on a towel. And then um, you'll go in and you'll, I just kind of spin, I spin the Q-tip over the surfaces rather than scrubbing it. I like to just kind of spin it. And you'll go and do that and flip over to the other side, get some more if you need to. Um, and then just keep going along, spinning it around and that'll kind of move it in, move it into the crevices even more and then clean it off of the raised surfaces. So you can see this guy looks pretty grungy right now. And that's kind of what I'm going for. The next step for this guy will probably be to hit him again with a really light Necron compound. Um, or instead of that, to just go with a metallic paint and just go and pick out some of those central surfaces that would be getting a lot of light on them. Um, that's actually what I did with this guy. So uh, these guys, the only difference here on the metal between these guys is I went back onto this guy and used, I think it was, instead of Necron compound on this guy, I think I used Vallejo Metal Color Steel. I think that's what I used on this one. Um, my, this proof of concept guy I made several months ago, uh, I'm just getting around now to actually painting a full unit of them. Uh, so I think I went from here to the Vallejo metal color, but you could also instead just hit them again with this, uh, Necron compound. And from here, I'm just going to go through and paint the shield. I'll probably do something similar here where it's a, it's a yellow, but not, not a, bright, vibrant, jumping out at you yellow, kind of a more subdued yellow, or uh, I'll do do kind of a yellow like I did on this Master Warden's cloak here, where it's just kind of dark and not very vibrant. Um, do that, and then paint the skirt, all the belts, and other little straps, and then base him, and he's pretty much gonna be done. So uh, it's very quick to batch paint all these guys with this process. And after batch painting them with this process, then you just go in and hit all those little details and that doesn't take all that long. And within a pretty short amount of time, you can have a whole unit of these guys done. And um, just because of this process that you follow, they, they end up looking like you spent a lot more time on them than you did. And uh, it gives them a real kind of dirty, beat up, war-weary look, which is how I think the Stannis army 
um, should look to me at least. Uh, so that's it for now. I'll probably I'll provide another update later once I've got more of these guys done. But thanks. All right, so this is an update on the uh, progress of my Baratheon Wardens. So uh, where we last left off, I was applying a kind of worn metal armor effect to these guys. So I've now done that. I think they look pretty grungy, not super, not super grungy, but uh, a little worn, definitely not like shiny high garden guys. Uh, I've also done all the, the base colors. I've done some highlighting, as you can see on the shield, I've done some nicks and scratches. Uh, these guys, as far as the minis themselves, they're mostly done. I have some, some final highlighting to do, some touch-ups. Um, nothing too groundbreaking or exciting to talk about as far as the, the painting of the minis go. This segment is going to focus mostly on the basing. Um, the only note I would say as far as the painting of the minis go is uh, for the for the little details of like the metal stag in the middle of his chest. Those guys I was struggling a little bit to find a color that looked kind of golden or bronze but not too shiny because I didn't want these guys looking too shiny. A couple of these guys I used uh, a gold metallic paint on and it looks a a little too shiny for my liking, uh, but what I settled on was to uh, just use use the dry brush silver look that they already had, and then just apply a contrast paint over it. The contrast paint I used is uh, Agaros, Agaros Dunes. So using that, it kind of gave them a dulled a dulled uh, gold look. Like here's a uh, Stag Knight Noble, you see his, his helmet has that uh, Agaros Dunes application to it. So it looks gold, but it looks a little worn, uh, not, not super shiny. Same thing with this Master Warden. He has it on his helmet and on his chest, so it kind of gives the effect of a, of a, of a uh, kind of a gold or bronze look, but it's not super shiny. Uh, so anyway, the topic of this segment is the basing. So... Usually when I start a new army, I base all the movement trays before I do anything else. And that's what I did here. So I based four infantry movement trays uh, all at one time. And that usually takes me significantly less time than it does to paint one actual unit. So I painted four of these movement trays. And they, uh, they're obviously kind of in a bleak, burned kind of a scheme here. So this is how my Stannis infantry units are going to look uh, or how they're going to be based. So I think it kind of fits with the R'hllor theme. It fits also with just sort of the desperate nature of Stannis's campaign as it goes on uh, and his sort of uh, relentless, take no prisoners, unstoppable, unflappable, uh, just attrition-based kind of campaign uh, that he doesn't care what it costs he will achieve victory no matter what so uh, that's kind of what I was going for with these with these bases and like I said I did this with all of them so I, I did four of them like this there's uh, they're all basically the same I used some uh, little tree stumps that I had laying around for years they're a, a woodland scenics little baggy of metal tree stumps. Let me go grab some. I actually bought some more because I ran out. So here they are. Like I said, I've had these. I had the first baggy for probably 10 years. The first baggy I got on clearance at a Hobby Lobby for like 99 cents. These ones I had to buy online for like 10 bucks, but they've come in handy over the years. Uh, so I use these, and I'm going to use the rest of them on some of the other movement trays, like the cavalry trays that I have yet to do. Uh, so so I, I stuck those in here, and then for the actual texture, I primarily used the uh, Pro Acryl coarse basing texture 
to get this to get this texture here. Uh, I also put little patches in there of Vallejo earth texture, acrylic earth texture. This is more fine fine texture. So I use this on some areas where the uh, where the coarse texture wouldn't really fit very well. So on some of these spots, some of these really thin spots, I put the the fine texture. Uh, but overall, it's mostly the rough texture. I figured that looked a little bit better for kind of a burned forest floor look. Um, just added texture that would kind of give the impression of there being burned up rocks and twigs and just all kinds of just scorched debris. And then stuck some rocks in there occasionally. So uh, for the color, the base color I used is... Let me grab a better bottle than that, actually. Uh, so the, the base color is uh, Vallejo German Gray. It's one of my go-to grays. It's basically my go-to dark gray. Uh, that's the that's the base color. And after I painted that, I went in and added some pigments. So again, going into my supply of of modeling materials that I've had for a decade or more. I went in and grabbed some uh, of these MIG production pigments that you can still get. I don't know if they're called MIG productions anymore. They might be called Ammo or uh, some other brand. But uh, basically, it's two different shades I've got here. One is a kind of a, a grayish brown, and then one is just straight up black, black smoke. And uh, I went in there and just applied that with one of my junky little texturing brushes and just just kind of blobbed it in there in random little spots and then when I was satisfied with where I had deposited it I went in and uh, used some uh, mineral spirits you can use whatever you want um, you can also use like acrylic thinner that'll work too and uh, I just put that put that in my palette uh, one of the little wells of my palette, dunked it in my brush, and then you just kind of, I used a little bit finer of a brush, but you, you just kind of fill your brush with it and then tap it on the areas that have the pigment and then capillary action will make will make the, the uh, thinner just cover, will just fill in all the little crevices and, and uh, hold that, that uh, pigment down. Once that had dried, it took a little while to dry, uh, I went back in and kind of did a really heavy dry brush, almost like a wet brush, really, of uh, the German Grey again. And then after that, I went back in and used uh, Vallejo Model Air Ocean Grey, which is a kind of a, a medium gray, but it almost has a little bit of a blue tint to it that I think kind of helped uh, almost give the impression that it's a nighttime, uh, that it's like a darker, like dusk or darker in the day or, or later in the day. Did that and then went back in with a light gray. I can't even remember which one it was. It was probably, probably sky gray, probably sky gray or, or equivalent. And uh, did a final dry brush with that to kind of give it the, this ashy, this kind of ashy look. And then uh, as far as painting the trees, there wasn't a whole lot of um, a whole lot of thought into that. I just used a couple of fluorescent colors that I had here. I have these AK fluorescence, luminous orange, fluorescent orange, and then for the darker the darker color within the tree stumps, I used an AK medium rust and kind of glazed that in there. I'm not 100% happy with how the the burned logs look or the burned trees look and uh, I'm, I'm okay with them for now though and I might eventually add some little sticks and twigs and broken up stuff in there but I, I don't want it to look too busy so I, I may just ignore that and not do that but for now the wardens themselves are uh, for the most part complete I've just started basing them now so I'm going to apply the same process that I used for, for the movement trays to these guys. Uh, next, I'll, I'll start doing the pigments. Uh, one little random gripe. I primed these guys all in Pro Acryl 
black brown, whoops, black brown primer. So I really like the color, but I do not like how the primer adhered. So I've had a lot of spots where the primer has just peeled off from uh, from light, you know, just from light contact with my hands, from me just picking these things up, it's just peeled off. Uh, I've noticed the same thing on some movement trays that I've uh, initially sprayed with, with that primer color. And then even earlier in the process when I was dry brushing these guys with the uh, with metallic paints, I would see some of that primer flaking off of them. So that was a little bit of an, uh, an annoyance and slowed me down. And it's not something that I've ever encountered when I've used just Vallejo black primer. Uh, so I think in the future, when I want to use that black brown primer, I'll I'll hit the the models first with with this, and then hit them with the black brown primer. Anyway, that's a kind of a little random gripe, but uh, that's all for now. Uh, next time we come back, we'll show probably the finished product. So here's the finished product. I'm pretty happy with how these guys turned out, given the time and level of effort. I probably spent around three weeks of hobby time on these guys, which is faster than my average of one month to finish a unit. In a given week, I probably have a total of about five hours or so of painting time, so that puts these guys at around 15 hours of work from start to finish. As far as what I'm pleased with, I'm pleased with how the armor turned out, and I'm relatively pleased with how the shields look. On most of my miniatures projects, I try to focus on doing one or two things really well on a mini. So folks' attention will be drawn to those and not to spots that I didn't pay very much attention to. If one or two details really pop, viewers' eyes will naturally gravitate towards those, and then they'll usually ignore some of the less finished spots. Like, for example, the insides of all the shields, I literally did nothing on them. Uh, they, were, they are still just in their original black-brown primer color, which kind of looks like old wood or old metal, so it works, but... You know, that's just kind of one shortcut that I took. And if I didn't mention it, you probably would have not noticed. You would have just thought, oh yeah, I painted it a dark wood or dark metal color. As far as what I'd improve if I could do this again, I'm not fully satisfied with how the burned tree stumps look. I think I need to tone down the burning ember effect a little bit. It's on the verge of looking like lava is coming out of the ground. I might need to go back and knock that down a little bit. Also, I thought about adding some small bits of burned wood around other parts of the movement trace to make it a little more obvious that this was a burned forest or a field. I ended up not doing that, but I might add a few pieces here and there later. I'm trying to be better about painting units to a good enough standard and not spending an inordinate amount of time on them. At the end of the day, I'm painting these guys to put them on the table to play with. I want them to look nice, but I also want to get them on the table. I worry about my interest in playing a faction not lasting as long as my interest in painting the faction. When I initially started playing Song, I told myself I would not start playing a new army until I had painted all the units of the army I was currently playing. Yeah, well, we can file that promise under lies I tell myself. So now I have a half-painted Greydry army, a half-painted Targaryen army, and this is my first painted Baratheon unit. Thankfully though, I have gone back and forth between Greyjoys and Targs amongst other projects and painted more of their units, so I have by no means stopped painting those armies. I just I'm now more distracted and jumping between multiple armies. I hope you've enjoyed this short how-to video. I'll do some more of these Hobby Corner videos in the future as suitable topics pop up. If you have any requests or suggestions for future videos, please feel free to drop those in the comments. Thanks for watching, and until next time, this is Randall, signing off.